Welcome to the Foss Education and today we are discussing chicken domestication. In the time when humans were beginning to cultivate edible plants and making primitive pottery, they also began to tame and breed the red jungle fowl, a tree roosting bird with a big fluffy tail, a brightly colored comb and glossy brown neck feathers. These fowl were moved out of tropical forested areas or maybe even bamboo thickets into human villages. Domestication led to considerable differences between the domesticated variant and their wild counterpart with respect to behavior, anatomy and physiology. The red jungle fowl cock has shining silky plumage, red on the head and back and green black elsewhere a pattern also seen in several domestic breeds. The hen is a rusty brown with speckled neck and minimal comb. The adult red jungle fowl is between 43 and 76 centimeters long. The head of the cock has ear wattles and a red comb, while the neck is yellow with a brightly reddish back. The underparts is dark with gray feet, while the arched tail is the glossy green. Where the chicken is really from is a very important question for understanding when the chicken was domesticated. The first chicken to ever cross the road was likely in Southeast Asia. When referring to the Neolithic period, we designated to the Old World Cultural Period of about 8000 to 3500 BC. It was characterized by polished stone tools, pottery, weaving, stock rearing, agriculture, and in some cases, megaliths. The wild species of gullus that may have contributed to the domestic fowl include the red jungle fowl, the grey jungle fowl, the Sri Lanka or Ceylon fowl, and the green or java fowl. A gene from the grey jungle fowl is responsible for the yellow pigment in the legs and different body parts of all domesticated chickens. Courts from China and Egypt show that fowl were domesticated and laying eggs for human consumption around 1400 BC and there are archaeological evidence for egg consumption dating back to the Neolithic age. The Romans found egg-laying hens in England, Gaul and among the Germans. In spite of this evidence, it is now known that cockfighting was the reason why chickens spread all over the world. Cockfighting is an ancient spectator sport. There is evidence that cockfighting was a pastime in the Indus Valley civilizations. The sport was popular in India, China, Persia and other eastern countries and was introduced into ancient Greece in the time of Themistocles. In the great river civilizations of Egypt, Mesopotamia, the Indus Valley and China, pastoralists preceded the true Neolithic settlers. The initial domesticated animals included cattle from the, the wild Auroch, sheep and goat from their wild equivalents, pigs and fowl who followed later and have an intertwined history. A second or secondary chicken domestication region is in the Indus Valley. Ancient seals dating 2500 to 2100 BC appear to depict chickens as well as skeletal remains of chickens and these were discovered in the Mohenjo-Daro area and this suggested that chickens were kept by the people of the Indus Valley civilization. The people of Tarim Basin might have had connections with the people of the Indus Valley civilization as the Indus Valley imported many materials like jade from China which had to pass through the region of the Tarim Basin. The Tarim Basin culture was founded by people who were of Indo-European origin and had inhabited northwest parts of China, whereas the Indus Valley civilization was a big civilization covering almost the entire Pakistan, northern and western India, and some portions of Afghanistan. With the transportation hub of China, Persia, India, Syria, Rome, Lulan City was one of the most open and prosperous metropolises in the world. 
Chickens appear to have been introduced to the peoples along the Mediterranean coast beginning in the 8th century BC and became common throughout Greece and Asia Minor by the 6th century BC. The first pictures of chickens in Europe are found in Corinthian pottery of the 7th century BC. The poet Cratinus, mid-5th century, calls the chicken the Persian alarm, and in Aristophanes' comedy of the birds, 414 BC, a chicken is called the median bird, which points to an introduction from the east. Seals bearing the images of roosters were discovered at Nimrut, the biblical Kala, and this indicated that chickens were kept in Assyria by the 8th century BC. The term Persian bird for the cock appeared to be given by the Greeks after Persian contact because of his great importance and his religious use among the Persians. But even long before that, in Iran, during the Kenyan period, from about 2000 BC to about 700 BC, the cock was the most sacred bird. In the city of Maresha, Israel, a city that enjoyed its peak during 400 to 200 BC, archaeologists found chicken bones, thousands of them, bearing the marks of knives used to butcher them. An ostracon, a flake of stone with writing on, was found outside the tomb of Tutankhamun and it shows a clearly depicted rooster on it. This is from about 1300 BC. There is no recorded mention of the domestic chicken in ancient Egypt before the Middle Kingdom, 2100 to 1700 BC. Both Aristotle and Diodorus, well-known Greek writers, referred to Egyptian egg incubators, an ingenious system of mud ovens designed to replicate the conditions under a broody end. With lots of heat, moisture and periodical egg turning, an egg oven could hatch as many as 4,500 fertilized eggs in two to three weeks, a volume that impressed foreigners for centuries. Western travelers mentioned the wondrous structures constantly in their writings about Egypt. In 1750, the French entomologist René Antoine Foucault de Remour visited an egg incubator and declared that Egypt ought to be prouder of them than her pyramids. For a long time, the Romans affected to despise this Greek diversion, but they ended up adopting it so enthusiastically that the agricultural writer Columella complained that its devotees often spent their whole patrimony in betting at the side of the pit. The Romans created specialized chicken farms that utilized hen houses and other methods to keep predators at bay and infectious diseases from gaining a foothold whenever animals are maintained in closed confinement. The earliest evidence of large-scale chicken eating in Europe only pops up during the 1st century BCE. In the 6th century, Pope Gregory I declared the rooster as the emblem of Christianity, and another papal enactment of the 9th century by Pope Nicholas ordered the figure of the rooster to be placed on every church steeple. Over time, the chicken also had its chance to spread through Africa. During the Great Depression and the restrictions of World War II, choosing birds for how many eggs they could lay was a smart strategy. It maximized the protein you could get from a bird without sacrificing the bird itself. However, they did not produce a lot of meat on their bones and they didn't taste like much. In 1945, the Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company, or a &P as they were known, the largest poultry retailer, sponsored a national contest in partnership with the USDA to produce a breed of chicken that could grow bigger faster and put on weight in all the right places. The unfortunate end result of this is that the varied backyard and farmyard breeds of yesteryear all became one predictable hybrid, a mild-mannered, white-feathered, big-breasted bird, supplied by a single company. 
In the 1960s, the goal of selective breeding in meat chickens was basically all about increased growth rate and increased meat production. The 1920s and 30s saw scientific research facilities emerge in an effort to increase egg-laying capacity through breeding and genetic manipulation programs. The Sarama is the smallest breed of chicken in the world, typically under 500 gram, but with even smaller birds that are under 250 grams being bred in the native Malaysia. Chickens have a squat and rounded appearance. They stand less than 70 centimeters tall and weigh approximately 2.6 kilograms on average. The largest chicken breed is the Jersey Giant. The males weigh from 5.8 to 6.8 kilograms and has a height of 60 to 66 centimeters. The hens are slightly lighter in weight and shorter. The black is on average one pound heavier than the white. Look out for our next edition where we're going to talk about the genetics behind chickens such as sex-linked inheritance, multiple alleles and genetic mutations that benefit humans. The FOSS education videos aims to make content colorful and clear to understand. The videos are based on the CAPS syllabus in South Africa with some extensions and expansions to other syllabi around the world. Connect with us at teachersbyteachers.com forward slash store forward slash the FOSS education. Also visit our Facebook site, join our link at the FOSS education. And we also have a website that offers programs to run through as a homeschooling syllabus. If you want to know more about diversity and change, look at the following videos. There's an introduction to natural selection, natural selection on a coral reef, natural selection of bears, an introduction to artificial selection, domestication of chickens, and the domestication of foxes. So like, share, and subscribe. Come on, you want to.